Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and before we get into this episode, I wanted to do a little PSA and remind you that I put out multiple shows a week of Old Time Radio Westerns. You can check them out by going to otrwesterns.com or looking up OTR Westerns on your podcast application of choice. We are releasing over 10 episodes a week so far, about 100 a month. So definitely want you to check that out. Again, otrwesterns.com and check it out. I also wanted to invite you to check out my sister podcast site, OT Netcast, and that's N-E-T-C-A-S-T. So O-T N-E-T-C-A-S-T, Netcast, otnetcast.com. We're currently releasing mystery genre shows, and this is shows like The Shadow, Escape, Suspense, and The Whistler. And we have plans on bringing other shows to the network for you guys to listen to. So it's my non-Western old-time radio channel that I can kind of do other genres that not only I like, but hopefully you would like too. You can check us out by going to otnetcast.com or searching O-T-N-E-T-C-A-S-T on your podcast app of choice. Now let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Gunsmoke. Original air dates July 1st, 1956, and the title is Gun for Chester. Gunsmoke, brought to you by Chesterfield. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed thanks to Accuray. They satisfy the most. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Dillon? Are you going hunting? No. I saw all kinds of wild turkey about a mile down the Arkansas yesterday. I ain't going hunting, Mr. Dillon. <laughs> What's the gun and all the shells for, then? Well, shotguns was made for more than shooting birds with. Yeah, that's true. Well, Mr. Dillon, you ever hear me talk about Live Oak County? Uh, South Texas? Sure I have. According to you, it's a hideout for bandits. Yes, it is. And they've got a saying down there that if the law ever did catch any of them, there ain't enough good men around to act as a jury to try the bad ones. <laughs> well, that's very interesting, Chester, but you're a long way from Live Oak County now. Well, part of it's moved up here. What? Aza Ledbetter. He's in Dodge. Aza Ledbetter? Is he an outlaw? No, sir. But I seen him at the Long Branch, and there's only one thing he's here for, Mr. Dillon. Well, what? To kill me. Chester, are you going to tell me why Asa Ledbetter is here to kill you? It don't matter why, Mr. Dillon. Okay. I'm going to go in there and talk to him. I'd assume you didn't. I don't like people getting killed in Dodge, Chester. 
keeping you. Now, you wait here, huh? Hello? Oh, say, you're the marshal. Your name Asa Ledbetter? How'd you know that? Chester told me. Chester? Yeah, Chester Proudfoot. <laughs> well, okay, Marshal, he got my name right, but I don't recall his. What? I never heard no Chester Proudfoot. Glad to meet you, though. Buy a drink? Oh, thank you. Say, there was a fella in here a while ago, I remember, because he was staring at me so hard. He heard me say my name, too. I was talking to a cowboy about finding work around here. Where are you from, Ledbetter? Texas. What part? Amarillo. Ever been in South Texas? No, never have. Marshal, what's this all about? Now, Chester thinks that you came here to kill him. Now, just look here, Marshal. I don't know this Chester fellow. Never even heard of him. I don't go around murdering people. I hope that's true, Lenny. Of course it is. And I don't like nobody dragging down my good name, Marshal. Nobody he is. is. So long. You just asked anybody from Amarillo about me, Marshal. They can tell you. Chester? I feel like a darn fool standing out here. Are you sure you haven't got Asa Ledbetter mixed up with somebody else? Not hardly. Uh, he claims he never heard of you. Ah, he's been looking for me for years. Why, Chester? It don't matter why, Mr. Dillon. If I'm dead, all that matters is I'm dead. Why don't you take a few days off, huh? Go fishing or something. You don't believe me, do you? I didn't say that, Chester. Well, you'll be sorry, Mr. Dillon. You'll be real sorry. That whistling man, Bobby Haggard, really started something. Tonight, the Calypso Boys join in. Ready, amigos? Packs more pleasure. Packs more pleasure. Chesterfield packs more pleasure. Because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. It stands to reason a cigarette made better and packed better, smokes better, tastes better. And Chesterfield is more perfectly packed by Accuray. This electronic miracle removes human error in cigarette manufacture. So Accuray Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips, mild yet deeply satisfying. Yes, Chesterfield gives you something no other cigarette can give you. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch, to the taste. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. By Chesterfield, mild, yet they satisfy the most. Kitty, that was a real good dinner. Mm hmm. <laughs> and thank you. Thank me. Well, I, I thought you were paying for it. You're the one who needs a vacation, not Chester. Oh, but you're a rich woman, Kitty. <laughs> Let's talk about Chester. Does he really think Asa Ledbetter's after him? Well, that's what he says. It's not like Chester to make up a thing like that. No, no, no. Max? You stay here. No, I'm going with you. It's a couple of drunken cowboys. Uh, you going after him? Mr. Gillen! Mr. Gillen! It's Chester, Matt, down there by the alley. Come on. Yeah. 
But now that it's on, it's like he's been hurt. Yeah. He shot me, Mr. Jones. He shot me. One of those cowboys? No, he's a lead better. What? I seen them cussed cowboys coming, so I ducked in the alley here. And Ledbetter was down at the end of it, just waiting for me. I think he just hired them fellas to set up a commotion so she could get a shot at Here, him. let me see that arm. Bullet went right in here, Mr. Dillon. It didn't break nothing, though. Ah, Chester, you've been hurt worse than us a dozen times. Now, look, if you ducked in the other, you were probably facing the street, weren't you? Yes, I was. All right, then Ledbetter wouldn't have been behind you. The bullet entered from in front. It was him, I tell you. Or the wild bullet from those cowboys. You think I'm lying? Well, I think you're worrying yourself into seeing things. I'm going up to Doc's, if I can make Now, it. wait a minute, Chester. Where's Ledbetter staying? Well, he told me the Dodge house, Matt. All right, I'll go talk to him. Sure, you go talk to him. How many times do I have to be shot around here before anybody believes me? been in your room here? Oh, I've been taking a nap, Marshal. Up until them drunks out there woke me up. Now, Chester says you tried to shoot him a few minutes ago. He's... Now, Marshal, I'm getting sick and tired of this Chester. What's he trying to do anyway? He's pretty certain about it. Bound and determined to get me into trouble? I'd doggone if I know why. There must be some reason. Well, sure, and if there is, I don't know it. I'll be glad when I find me a job and get shut of this town. Never did hear nothing good about Dodge anyway. We try to keep it peaceful. Oh, sure, but it's like you say. Probably ain't enough good men left to act as jury to try the bad ones. Uh-huh. Now, just where do they say that, Ledbetter? Oh. <laughs> I don't know. You heard it before, ain't you? Yeah, yeah I've heard it before. It's a saying down in South Texas in Live Oak County. Well, that may be, Marshal. And I heard it in Amarillo, now ain't that possible? Yeah, I guess it is. Marshal, listen here. If I come here to kill a man, what did I be waiting around for? A change of weather? It don't make sense, does it? No. No, it doesn't make sense. Any part of it. How does it look, Doc? Well, it's just a scratch, man. A scratch? I suppose if I come in here scalped, you'd say the barber just give me too tight a haircut. Now, Chester, be brave, boy. Yes, there we are. In a week, you'll never know you got hit. Well, it's a mercy it wasn't my gun arm. Chester, I told you Asa Ledbetter was in his room the whole time. You mean he told you? I asked the desk clerk on the way out. Then he was lying, too. Chester, how long since you've had a good night's sleep? Now, Doc, don't you start that. Well, you admit you didn't actually see Ledbetter in that alley. But next time you'll see him all right, won't you? Yeah, whether he's there or not. <laughs> Have you finished doctoring my wound? Oh, now, wait a minute. Getting mad won't help you. Well, maybe it will. Well, where are you going now? Who cares where out I'm going? Uh, he'll get over it, Doc. Yeah, I hope so. The only thing I can figure is that he's got this lead butter mixed up with somebody else. Yeah. But it'd certainly help if he'd say why he thinks he's after him. Because... Matt? Yeah, what is it? Come over here to the window. Huh? Quick. What's going on? Look, down in the street. Well, that says a lot better. And Chess just standing there about to shoot him. Yeah, I'd better hurry, Doc. You 
I'm just getting plumb good and tired of you. Then why don't you do something about it? Yes, sir. You stay out of this, Mr. Dillon. I don't like gunfighting, no matter who starts it. I didn't start it. He come here to shoot me. Marshal, he is crazy. He ought to be locked up. Sure, I'm crazy. I should have called you out before. Now, you going to fight or not? No, I ain't going to fight. You scared? I've got no quarrel with you. Are you scared? Leave him alone, Chester. No. Then tell me what this is all about. No. Now, Chester, why don't you just go off and, and get drunk or something? Pete! Chester. Now, will you draw? Now, will you? Oh, Marshal, I ain't going to take much more of him. I said, are you All right, Chester, draw? that's enough. Now, you come with me. You're a dirty coward. You buddy. come with me, I said. You're with him, ain't you? You and Doc and everybody. Maybe you are crazy, Chester. Sure. Oh, sure. Well, where are you going? I'm going to get me a drink. Alone. <laughs> Say, where are you listening to Gunsmoke? In your car? Getting ready for dinner? Oh, I see. Just relaxing in your favorite easy chair. Well, I'd say you're in a good spot right now to really enjoy a Chesterfield. You see, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. It stands to reason. A cigarette made better and packed better... Smokes better, tastes better. And Chesterfield is more perfectly packed by Accuray. This electronic miracle removes human error in cigarette manufacture. So Accuray Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips. Mild, yet deeply satisfying. Yes, Chesterfield gives you something no other cigarette can give you. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch, to the taste, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. By Chesterfield, mild, yet they satisfy the most. <laughs> You, Doc? Oh, man. Why, it's three o'clock in the morning, man. Yeah. You've been on a call? Well, I haven't been romancing the ladies. Yeah. Oh, um, is Chester asleep? Yeah, he's asleep. But not in the office. Well, why not? Where is he? I locked him in the cell out back. You locked him in his... What? He got drunk, Doc. By sundown, he was as drunk as I ever saw him. Well, maybe he needed it, Matt. Maybe it'll bring him out all this. Well, something's got to. Yes, it does. Well, I'm going to go to bed. <clears throat> you better go, too. Yeah, I am, Doc. I think I'll use Chester's bed in the office tonight. Well, I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, good night, Doc. Chester, this here's a shotgun. Huh? All right, now get off that bed and get over to the window. Go on. Better. I'm going to sit down here and light the lamp now. But you just stand steady. The shotgun's right across my knees. Uh, 
Now, Chester, you and me, we're going... Marshal, what you doing here? Well, I was trying to get some sleep. Well, you don't sleep here. It's Chester's bed, all right. Where is he? Now, he's around. Somewhere. Where are you going? Stand still. Marshal, stand still. I mean it. Thought I was just going to close the back door here. You left it open. I want it open. All right. I'll open it wide. Here, Marshal. No call for you. Boy, where's Chester at? I don't know where he is, Ledbetter. You're lying. Yeah, I'm lying. He got drunk this afternoon. You brought him over here. I thought you put him to bed, but since you didn't think but one place he'd be, right out there in a cell behind you. You walk right past him on your way in, you Ledbetter. Get out of that doorway, Marshal. No. I'll shoot you if you don't. You'll shoot Chester if I do. Now move, I say. I can't oblige you, let better. I'm I'll sorry. I'll kill you, Marshal. Don't shoot again, Chester. Mr. Dillon? Is he dead? Yeah. You hit him in the head with the first shot, Chester. Pure luck. I heard you kick that door. It woke me up. So I wonder anything could wake you up tonight. Well, I don't feel so good, but I ain't drunk no more. Hey, you got me locked in here. Yeah, I thought of that, but I forgot to take your gun away from you. That was mighty careless of you, Mr. Dillon. Well, it doesn't matter now. You knew I had it. You were going to let him shoot at you so as he'd wake me up and I'd have a chance at him. I guess I was kindly wrong about you being again me. You know, it might have helped things if you'd have told me why Ledbetter was after you, Chester. I just couldn't, Mr. Dillon. Oh, why? It had to do with a lady. Oh. She's dead now, and I didn't want nobody talking about her, saying her name. Nobody. Can you understand that? It'll be daylight soon, Chester. Let's go brew up some coffee, huh? Thank you, Mr. Yellen. Thank you. A moment, our star, William Conrad. Vacation coming up soon? Here's how to pack more pleasure. Make sure you have a couple of cartons of Chesterfields in your suitcase or in your car's glove compartment. A touch tells you Chesterfields are firm, packed full. Your taste tells you they satisfy the most. So when you do your vacation shopping, ask your dealer for Chesterfields. Buy the carton. You know, the early frontier years were lusty and brawling, and men happily fought each other as a matter of course. But next week, it's the man who refuses to fight that causes all the trouble. And that was the West. Good night. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast was Lawrence Dobkin as Asa Ledbetter, Harley Bear as Chester, Howard McNear as Doc, and Georgia Ellis as Kitty. Live Modern. Smoke L&M. Live Modern. L&M. Yes, have an L&M. No other cigarette you can buy, plain or filter, gives you the full, exciting flavor you get through the pure white L&M Miracle Tip. 
Through the modern miracle tip, L&M tastes richer, smokes cleaner, draws easier. So light up, free up, let your taste come alive. Live modern, smoke L&M. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story on gun smoke. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day and thanks for listening.